you shall be remembered. Where they have erased your name, suddenly they will erase your name back again. November is your month for separation for remembrance. From outside the country, you shall be remembered. Within the country, you shall be remembered. Far and near, you shall be remembered. I pray your remembrance upon you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, you shall not be forgotten. I say, you shall not be forgotten. Touch yourself and say, I shall not be forgotten. Now lift up your voice and pray to God. Lord, November shall be my month of remembrance. November, I shall be remembered. In my contract, I shall be remembered. In my business, I shall be remembered. In my career, I shall be remembered. In my family, I shall be remembered. I will not end the month of November empty. I will not end the month of November empty. Jesus, remember me for good. And the Lord, remember Noah. Lord, remember me in this month of November. Remember me and my family. Remember me and my career. Remember me and my business. Remember me and my family. Lord, remember us in this month of November. I shall be remembered. I am separated to be remembered. I am separated to be remembered. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You and I shall be remembered for good. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Gracious Father, again tonight, thank you. Blessed is the man that thou causest to approach thee in thy court. And the same person shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. You have brought us tonight to satisfy us. Thank you. Only you can satisfy our hunger. Only you can satisfy our taste. Lord, tonight, satisfy us. And do it and we vow to return our glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on if there are believers in the house in Lord, amen. If you can, put your hands together for Jesus. I mean for Jesus. For the King of Kings. For the Lord of Lords. Come on somebody. Shout with the shout of victory. Unto God. Come on shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at somebody by your side and say, I love you by Dooley. <laughs> Come on, tell someone I love you by force. Say it again, I love you compulsorily. Now look at somebody and tell the person, I love you by Tulasi. <laughs> now put your hands together for Jesus. And have your seat, glory to God. May the love of God take you to your place of blessings. Come on, you believe me, let me hear your loudest amen. The devil is in trouble this month. How many knows that? The devil is in trouble this month. We dance him out of our domain. We dance him out of our corridors. We dance the devil out of our lives. <laughs> and they are in trouble this morning, Jesus Christ. Quickly tonight again, I'd like to welcome you on the behalf of God's servant, our Father Bishop David Oedipo, into this great month, the month of November, where you and I shall be remembered. Our focus for the month of November 2023, as we kick the ball rolling this, month, this evening, is praise facilitate fulfillment of prophecies. I'd like you to say that with me. Say that again if you mean it. That means praise is the oil that lubricates fulfillment of prophecies. It's the oil. You put it <laughs> before you know fulfillment comes, I mean prophecy comes to pass in your life. It will come to pass in your life this year. And this is part 1A as we start tonight. And our teaching series, Midweek Services, is understanding how praise facilitates fulfillment of prophecies. You and I need to understand it. And tonight we have come to open the veil so that we begin to see prophecies fulfilling our lives. I congratulate you being in church for the first day in the month of November 2023. Come on, let me hear you. Amen. Amen. I'd like you to know that God's word concerning you and I is a sure word. Come on, say a sure word. Say it again, a sure word. So it's sure than any surest word you may ever receive. God's word. Come on, say God's word. It's sure. 
is sure than any other surest word. He, he, he you must have received any surest word before. But God's word is sure than any surest word you and I must have received. I'll be unveiling some few things for you tonight. That simply suggests to me that it does not matter the hope and promises of man or any man must have given you God's word is sure and more reliable in delivery than the hope and promises of a man it doesn't matter who promises you it doesn't matter who gives you hope and you know listen men are used to lift up your hope and at a time no stab your destiny are you with me they give you all kinds of things take your hope to a level and suddenly they back up and then they watch you land crashing because of the limitations of man but tonight God has spoken to you and I his word is sure and surer than any surest word you must have received from any man tonight as we unveil it to you may you begin to ride on the sure word of God to get to your destination in the name of Jesus Christ how do I know? Look at it very carefully with me. Romans chapter 3 and in verse 4. Very straightforward. Romans chapter 3 and in verse 4. See what the Bible said. He said, God forbid. Say with me, God forbid. Say it again, God forbid. God forbid, yeah. Let God be true. Come on, say let God be true. But every man a liar. Only God can be true. Any other person is a liar. Any other person. Let God be true. But every man a liar. As it is written. That thou might be justified in thy sin. Only God can be justified for whatever he says. He can't lie about what he says concerning you and I. So he's always justified by what he says. You can't hold a man to what he says. Because man is limited. So man can be a liar, but only God be a true God forever. May his truthfulness show begin from now in your life. Come on, you believe it? Let me hear you loud and say, man. So tonight, I bring you to the fountains of God's word that guarantees you and I a change of story. Come on, say, my story shall change. Say it again, my story will change. Say that very well to yourself, my story will change. And I see your stories changing beginning from now. You believe it, let your amen not be psychedelic. <laughs> that is why prophetic scriptures are defined as the most sure word of prophecies. Prophetic scriptures are defined as the most sure word. That means it's more than any other word you have received. Most sure word of prophecy. Come and look at it here. In first, I mean second Peter chapter one, and in verse nineteen beginning, he said, "For I mean, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, so as unto light that shineth in that place, until the day dawn, and the day star rises in your heart." So listen to me. How do we see prophets come to pass? You believe it to a point that it begins to rise in your heart. Until it begins to rise in your heart. And then create a new dawn in your life. That is how to believe it. Until and unless it rises in your heart. And then a star rises in your heart. That is then you see the power of prophecies come to pass. Wow. Verse 20. He said knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretations. Nobody corner people to a corner to say it. No. Nobody dribble people. Hey, come. Let's start to say something out of drunkenness. Out of overdose of food. No. How? He said, for, for the prophecies came not in all times by the will of man, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So every word that will be, that be spoken to your life, or be speaking to your life this month or two, down to Shiloh, 
is not an orchestration of man. It is the move of the Holy Ghost. And that is what gives it the capacity and the enormity to deliver in your life. May God's word deliver in your life. Did you hear me at all? I say, may God's word deliver in your life. May God's word deliver in your life. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. Quickly tonight, what are prophecies? Let's look at it from there. What are prophecies? <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Prophecies, first of all, are not religious wishes. No. They are not religious wishes. It's not what people wish to say. It's not what people feel. It's not the ideology of man. As I've been told. So prophecies are not religious wishes. But the unfolding of divine plan. Come on say divine plan. How is it a divine plan? Because of the involvement of the Holy Ghost. For no man knoweth you like God. No man can explain your destiny like the Spirit of God. So all those people who are out of drunkenness and then try to corner people, put you in one corner and then trying to fabricate some things to make you feel happy. That's not prophecy. They prophesy to you by your size. Some they prophesy to you by the way you are dressed. Unknown to you that you can even borrow shirt to wear to church. And unknown to them that you, you know, there are people who even borrow car to do borrow posing. And so if you prophesy to a man because he drives a car, you are a foolish man. People who don't start. He say, hey, come, 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 come. And they are guiding you, checking your shoes, checking your necktie. And then after a while, they say, he, 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 he. Spiritual reggae. <laughs> and say what does not matter. Say what God didn't put in your heart. Why? Because they size you by your look. God won't look at your look. God will look at your life. He won't look at your look. Because there is no destiny in look. God will look at your life. Tonight, may God look into your life and bring you your divine plan. Yeah. Come on, you believe me? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Satan is in trouble. Yeah. I like you to come alive and be responsible that the fact is, is Jesus owns my life. And so he can speak to me at any time by the spirit of God. To transform my life and to change my life and put my feet on the pedestal of glory. Tonight you won't miss your journey on earth here. Yeah. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Somebody who believes it, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. So by the power of the Holy Ghost, your life and my life is always unveiled. That is prophecy. Don't wait for someone who fold himself. Like one small early morning witch beaten by rain. And then he's planning and cornering you, trying to tell you. <laughs> Prophecy is not by folding yourself. Sir, anywhere God can speak through you when you are connected to God. Anywhere. Anywhere. Look at what the Bible said here. In Joshua chapter 21 and in verse 25. He said, they fail not. Come on, say they fail not. They fail not. Of out of the self of any good thing which the Lord has spake, I mean spoken unto the house of Israel. He said, All how many all came to pass. Joshua chapter 21 and in verse 45. All came to pass. All came to pass. Not one fail out of it, because they were moved as a city. They were moved by the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, may God make your life better for your life. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. <laughs> that is why I pity some fellows who go around some prophets, I mean prophets in court. Hmm? <laughs> I, my, myself and my wife one day, she was telling me about a woman who traveled all the way from Lagos to come to Abuja. Have you them? Many of them are there in Abuja. Many, many. Many of them are fake fouls. What was it? She came 
that they will prophesy to her. She prophesied for her. I can't remember how much, 100 and something thousand. They asked her to bring or something like that. And when my wife was telling me for prophecy, I said, please tell her I'm available. You should come. Let me, you should give me 50,000. <laughs> 50,000. I won't collect too much. <laughs> Boy, you know, the funny part is this. Many people want the devil to speak to them instead of God speaking to them. You see, a man can't give you what he does not have. He won't let give you what he has. So when you force him to talk to you, he gives you what he has. He gives you what he has. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Your destiny is more crucial and more precious. Don't put it or place it on a, on a keg of a gunpowder. It will explode. Don't place your destiny on a keg of a gunpowder. It will explode. You have a sure word of prophecy that you can sit with God. Holy Ghost, what are you saying? Shh. And the light just show here. You see, you don't have to be a pastor to hear God. You don't have to be a prophet or an evangelist. Just have heart to heart connection with God. Heart to heart connection with God. And then you'll be surprised that God can speak to you and speak to anybody. That is what defines your destiny. May your destiny not be lost anymore. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. They are unfolding. The unfolding of divine plan. You see, it is stupidity that you have your glorious destiny here. And then you are running after men, after women up and down here. Who will do some? Some of us are too daft to a point that you go there and tell them, say, do what for me. He said, how about this? He said, do what for me. He will do what for you, of course. He will do what for you. We had one ugly situation recently before I left my former station. On Sunday morning, we had an encounter. Our sister was just misbehaving. And then we told them, oh, take her to church. I mean, to, to the hospital. I was just coming from the church, inside the office to step into the, I mean, the church. I saw her, unlike her. I, saw, I said, please, somebody go for the call to worship. And she, the associate, I mean, the ARP went on. And suddenly I saw her, I said, no, take her to the hospital. The pastor who was a doctor went down and then observed her and all of that. They took her. And on their way to the hospital, sir, their so-called brother double-crossed them and took them to a prophet in quotes that was giving her initiation and collecting her blood with white handkerchief and using it to wipe her private part. We lost her sister. And all this, hey, hmm, hmm, you won't hear. After hot service, after hot service, you still go looking for somebody called prophet. He said, talk to me, sir. Talk to me, Baba, Baba, Baba. After same heavy service, that you should go to your house and be brainstorming and be meditating on what you have heard. You are looking for someone who will prophesy. May that not be your portion from now. We lost that young sister. May devil not corner your destiny. May devil not corner your life. Come on, may devil not corner your life. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. God speaks according to what he can do. And we do if we believe him. He speaks according to what he can do. Not what you can do. Not what I can do. But what he can do. Can you now make promises on the behalf of your 10 year old son? Old son? And start making promise now or making pledge. All those of you who believe in bazaar or in donation. As I donate 10 million naira, I mean 10 million naira, on the behalf of my two year old boy, you will kill that boy. So you don't make promises on the behalf of your 10 year or two year old boy. You make promises according to your capacity to deliver. That is the same thing God is doing. He won't do things because you are there or pledge or maybe believe in your pocket. He promised and prepared to do it according to his size. And he's a big, big God. There is nothing he cannot do. He can't say a thing and say I'm backing out. 
He says it and fulfill it. Tonight, whatever I have said concerning your life, I see it come to pass. Did you hear me at all? Whatever I have said concerning your life and my life, I see it come to pass. It's not bound by time. When that time is running out, sir, one day to expiration, it can bring it to pass. One day to expiration of time, he will bring it to pass. He won't watch his name being robbed on a mess. No. No. So don't see him. Hey, time is against me. God, no, 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 no. God is not bound by time. No. Glory to God. I say glory to God. In Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 24, I mean 14 and verse 24, Isaiah 14, 24, the Lord of all has sworn, saying, surely, come and say surely, surely as I have taught, <laughs> so shall it come to pass, and as I propose, so shall it stand, the word shall, there is a compulsional word. That means come what may, it will come to pass. I am not bound by time. I am not a God of probability. If I say it, I mean it. And I will do it. Anything he said to you and I, he has the power to bring it to pass. He's not saying it to pity you or to make you feel good. No, he's saying it because he has the capacity to do it. So if he said to you, I'm going to change your story before the end of the year, please believe him. That you are in November does not make any difference. That you step into one day this December to the end of the year, it does not make. Ah, please just calm down. I say, how many horses will it take to the ocean to drink it to a finish? No one, sir. No horse. You can't take if you take, take any number of horses to the ocean, they will only drink and go away. Don't pity God. He has enough to give to you. He has enough to give to you. He has enough to give to you and I. He has enough to give to you and I. So watch him and believe him to the end. And see the end of your prophecy be fulfilled in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, how will you explain this? A lady without fallopian too. A lady without womb. Yet conceiving. Huh? So what do you think God cannot do? So relax your mind. He knows what to do. He knows what for himself say this for you to just know. But he himself, he knows what to do. Ah. Glory to God. I see God changing somebody's destiny here tonight. Come on, you believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. But very quickly, before we partake of the communion, how praise facilitates fulfillment of prophecies. Let's look at some few of them and then we rise up to partake of the communion. Number one, praise focuses on the efficacy of what God, I mean, of what is written and not what is happening. He focuses on the efficacy of what is written and not what is happening. Permit me to say here that what is written is nothing but just facts. I mean, what is happening is nothing but just facts. But what is written is nothing but the truth. Facts and truths are two different things. You may have facts and not prove it. But you can't have, I mean, you may have facts and not prove it. But you can't have truths and not show us how it looks like. Don't behave like um, this other party that declares somebody a winner of election. They say bring result. They, don't, they can't bring the result. Huh? Are you with me? Oh, we, we agree with you. The man you declare him a winner. Where is the sequence? What are the basis for declaring this man a president of the country? Say, go to court. <laughs> I, left the, I left those facts in the court. <laughs> God is not APC, neither is he PDP. God is God. God is who? God is God. So he has his truths at all times with him. Anything, anytime you need it, he presents it to you. So he said, I want to make you a billionaire before the end of the year. He has his truth in his hands. I will give you triplets before the end of the year. He has his truth in his hands. So God is not just saying it to please your life or to make you happy. He's saying it because he knows what to do and how to do it and how to get there. 
May God change your story before the end of the year. You believe me? Let me hear you loud and say, man. So take your eyes off what is happening out there and fix your eyes on what is written. <laughs> Many years ago, sir, I told my people, I said, listen to me, I was at the verge, in fact, my mother just reminded me today again, at the verge of being slaughtered by people. <laughs> but I stood one day in my father's rickety, I mean rickety uh, compound, and I said, I will pack my Mercedes Benz here one day. <laughs> I don't have bank account. And I'm not tired of sharing the testimony, sir, because God is true. And listen, when I say that, sir, I don't have bank account. But I knew that no matter what is happening, God can bring it to pass. 20 years later, tw come on, say 20 years. 20 years after, sir, I was privileged to buy a car. And it was a Mercedes Benz. And I was given a, a road safety officer to drive me from... Uh, he loved it. All the way to Benway State, somewhere in uh, Ram Makodi, somewhere. How many months? Okay, let's pass through my, my father's house. And so we passed through. And then I came, my mother wasn't around. The road safety officer parked the car. And then he sat down. And I leaned on the wall, just waiting for my mother to come, just looking at the vehicle. And she 20 years thought just came life on my heart. That boy, did you remember that you said that you will pack your Mercedes Benz in this house one day? Ah, tears just deep down off my cheeks. Boy, let me tell you something. Your size notwithstanding. Where you came from notwithstanding. Amen. When he says it in a meeting. When he wants to change your story, he means it. When he wants to turn your life around, he means it. When it's time for a story to change, hundred demons of power can change him. So your brain is too small. You can't calculate the true word of God. Just relax. Believe him. Just believe him, sir. And then the man, the, my mother just came and by the power of God, he just man, please don't turn your back on God. If he has said anything to you, sir, believe him. In total. Believe him. I stood one day and I said, boy, the way women are delivering children here, men be ready. If you are not careful, you begin to deliver. By reason of understanding of the power and the impetus of focus on God. Many people don't see the realities of heaven. They thought heaven has gone far. It's not true. It's as close as today. Just believe this God and see how it changes your story. He won't consult your past before he changes your story. No. No. I heard from my father many years ago. He said, if you are conscious of your background, you will lose the remaining ground. You lose the remaining ground. So be ready and be rest assured that if I do the needful, my story will change in no time. You see, this is all you and I need. Stop thinking that God is a man. He's not a man. Let all man be a liar. Let God be a true God. Let him be a true God. As I speak to you right now, somebody's story will change before the year ends. Somebody's story will change before the year ends. So take your eyes off what is happening. Take your eyes off what is happening. Fix your eyes on God. Fix your eyes on God. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 18. In everything. How many things? In everything. Say give thanks. For this is the will. Of who? <laughs> this is the will of God in Christ Jesus consigning you and I. Verse 18. He said, faithful is he that call you and I and the same God will do it. Not your father, not your uncle. Huh? So he knows your background. 
before you arrive here. He knows what he can do in you before you arrive here. Tonight, as you partake of this communion, may your story change in a grand star. May your story change in a grand star. Come on, you believe me? Let me hear your loudest amen. And finally, as we rise up to partake of the communion and sing phrases to dance before this God who can do all things. All barriers to fulfillment of prophecies cleared our path as we sustain God's presence through praise. So look at it here. Devil knows that as long as God is with you or on your side, you have the right to break through on everywhere. So he tried to create barriers. He tried to create barriers. Not between you and him. Because it's infinitesimal. But between you and God. Because whatever creates that may sustain that barrier between you and God has separated and disconnected you from the happiness. And so he chipping bitterness. He chipping as small as unforgiveness, you may think, is. No, some people just feel. Boy, no beside the. I know one time. But even the Bible said, if one of your fingers will take you to hell, he said, cut it off. I'm only cutting him off. I'm only cutting her off. Forget it. You know what is happening in your heart. That is why the barrier, the contour is existing between you and your God. There are people who even keep malice with their customers. People who are part of those who will take you up. You are keeping malice with them. What's the problem? Are you receiving an award? Rise your feet. There is no future for a man without God's presence. There is no future for a man without God's presence. So all you need to do, take anything, let the devil take anything away from you. Let him not temper with God's presence. Because if he tempers with God's presence, you are gone and gone forever. Tonight, receive the baptism of God's presence around your life. Receive the baptism of God's presence around your life. Receive the baptism of God's presence around your life. And now, the question is, is, how do I retain and sustain God? Through praise. Through praise. Through praise. If you are not a praiser, uh, God is in next flight. I mean, the next flat. You are on the other flat. Living with those who sing praises. And then, you are just alone, drying there. Because he inhabits the praises of his people. So anytime you find yourself as a praiser, you have already, I mean, you are cohabiting with God. He lives around your house. He lives with you. He stays with you. That is why a praiser is always flourishing. How can you disconnect a tree from a scent of water? And you think it will dry off? No. As long as it's connected to the scent of water, it keep blossoming and keep burning. That is what it looks like. And when you don't have access to this water again, what happens? No matter what you are eating, you are drying off. That won't be your portion again. I said that won't be your portion again. Tonight, let me give you this privilege. You want to say, Jesus, come into my life. Because we need to do this. This is the first day. First day. First day in this new month. To clear your part in order to walk free with God. To Shiloh 2023. So as you can begin to take possession of what belongs to you. Want to partake of this communion tonight. Before then, you are saying, Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Please, you are the one I'm talking to. Oh, Jesus, I've just had your word. I rededicate my life to you today. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. You are giving your life to Jesus. Please come. Please come. Please come. Please come. Please come. Church, clap some more for Jesus.